Thank right, you. Right, so thank you, Jan. And we have one final session. Um, we do. Yes, we do. And um, the next talk will be about this year's uh, um <laughs> in introduction about how to contribute uh, in the NEOS community. And we have a special setup for that. Exactly. We'll be joined by Sebastian, uh, who will do some, well, of course, the best, best thing is live coding, right? <laughs> so Live um, participation. We, we tried to uh, learn from this morning's experience, and we, I think we hooked up fewer cables or something. <laughs> <laughs> there is Sebastian. Hi. Thanks for joining us on the stage here today. Um, we came up with this list of things we wanted to uh, talk about in terms of participating in the NEOS community. <coughs> now, as... Many of you are hopefully aware um, there's a few things to get you started. Uh, the first uh, thing for me when I got in contact with the NEOS team was actually Slack. So Slack is a you know, chat communication tool that we use to coordinate ourselves and the community. So Sebastian um, can show us, uh, if we can get Sebastian's screen on the, on the stream, please, um, we can see how you can join the Neo Slack. There we go. So the URL is, Sebastian, can you read that? Yeah, uh, Slack.neos.io. Uh, slack and then you get this inviter screen. And what you basically do is you enter an email address and you will get <laughs> a Slack invite delivered to your inbox. So that usually just takes a few seconds to be delivered. There we go. You have to sign up with a name and password. And what you get when you sign into Slack is there's a lot of channels. And I think there's uh, we, we have a setup where a few of those are selected by default so that you're, um, you th there's an announcements channel and a lounge or something like that. Yeah, and you can join a lot more channels than you see uh, right at the beginning. So we have channels for different topics. Um, for example, we have a channel uh, about flow general questions. Uh, we have a channel about uh, NEOS related general questions. Um, we have channels for core development, right? So you see there's a channel browser where you can go and search uh, through all the channels we have. Um, the announcement channel, I think that is pre-selected in the beginning. Uh, what you need to know about the announcements channel is please don't post anything there unless you really want to announce something. And uh, has someone seen my umbrella is not an announcement? Um, <laughs> then we usually delete them. So in the launch, um, there um, is the ex exact opposite role. You can write something like, hey everybody, or which is much appreciated, um, post uh, your favorite tune of the day. Some music is always appreciated in the launch. Yeah. And then um, if you're interested in certain topics, um, as Sebastian just showed you, um, you can check uh, uh, the existing channels. So some of them start with guild, for example. There's guilds about our website, about technical topics like uh, de domain-driven development, domain-driven design, um, the form builder, what do you have? The Craft marketing UL. guild, yeah. The NEOS conference guild as well. So, and all these channels are open. So just join them and you can take part in the conversation that's going on. You can read up on, on you know, the latest messages. That's all transparent and uh, you can go in and say hi and uh, normally, you get a very quick response from someone from the community. It doesn't have to be a team member. Anybody really can, can join the conversation there and uh, suggest uh, yeah, yeah, things. Really. So, f for example, um, if you want to contribute something which doesn't necess necessarily have to be code, but um, maybe you found something weird on the website. So you go to the website guild and say, you know, there's something wrong here with the website. and 
How, how can I fix that? Is the magic <laughs> question. <laughs> you have we, to we will show that later. <laughs> uh, we will come to that point. Um, yeah, so Slack uh, is, is just, you know, go to slack.neos.io if you are not already in. Um, get get the invite delivered to your inbox and start browsing channels and, and you know, read up on some, some conversations that are going on. So the question is, we have multiple communication channels. So the question is, when do you use which um, communication channel, Slack or some, some other channels we have as well? And I think, I mean, it depends a bit on your personal preference. Uh, in, in, if in doubt, just use what helps you mo uh, most, of course. Um, but often you go to Slack if you want to have a quick answer um, or want to discuss something. Um, however, if you have a question, for example, about Neos or Flow, uh, which could wait a bit li uh, a bit more, then there's another channel we have which is more suited for that, and that is uh, our discussion forum. Uh, and that is on discuss.neos.io. And the point why you should uh, go there to post your question is that people can much more easily find answers later on. So, we need a... Um, in, uh, of course, you can search for existing answers there. Um, we have all kinds of different categories, um, but you need a login in order to post something there. So if you uh, want to have a login, you can either manually go to id.neos.io or you will be redirected. And there you can create a new account, which is um, your universal NEOS community account, uh, which potentially can also be used for other purposes. Right. So while Sebastian is uh, setting up, getting <laughs> his account set up, <laughs> the demo account set up uh, for, for Discuss, um, as we briefly saw already, th the forums, they're indexed by Google, basically, so you can find the answers um, even by searching with a search engine, uh, you can search, of course, in the forum itself. And there's all we have cat categories that can help you navigate and put your question in the right forum. There are moderators which can help you, you know, find the right uh, forum if that's needed. And it's really, really useful if there is a problem. Um, check out discuss.neos.io if someone else has had that already. And, you know, it's not lost in a stre stream of conversation. Um, it can be referenced again, it can be linked externally. And uh, dis Discourse, which is the software that we're using for the forum, um, provides, a, I think, a really nice uh, user experience. Um. So, for example, uh, what the Neos team uses Discuss for is decision making. Um, if there are things we need to decide upon, and actually we have a whole process for that, uh, understanding how big is the decision to take, how much impact does it have, how easily can it be reverted, and so on. Uh, in these cases, we put um, the decision on Discuss, and then the NEOS team, or sometimes the whole community, um, can vote on it. You see some. there are also some RFCs where discussions happen sometimes, after the discussion, there may, may be a vote. And one vote we have very often, um, and because we have it for every NEOS version, is uh, the voting for the new wallpaper, right? So that is also open to the new uh, whole community to, to uh, suggest new wallpapers for the login screen. There's always this post, hey, please post your suggestions, and then you see all the suggestions, and in the end, um, there's, there's a voting. Now, I'm, I, w I was looking at the entrance, yeah. and I went, oh, yeah, yeah, beautiful yeah, yeah. pictures, beautiful <laughs> pictures, always, uh, Absolutely. always a pleasure to see those entrants. There are also some, some sp um, very few uh, categories, uh, for example, the NEOS Foundation Board category, or, um, where sometimes we would post something there to coordinate internally with the NEOS uh, Foundation. That is mostly meant for, you know, being transparent about uh, w what we do there. It's not so meant for um, 
for participation in that case and and you see uh, we haven't used that particular category uh, really yet so but in general there are really no hidden hidden channels where the whole NEOS team hides or so we try to make everything very public right okay so that, that this was the forum discuss.neos.io and we Getting every little bit more technical here. So the next thing we wanted to show you is uh, the documentation. And uh, a few years ago, there was a big initiative. We mentioned this earlier, uh, Roland Schütz and, and Bastian and Sebastian. And you know many people were part of that initiative to, to get that set up. So uh, the website is docs.neos.io. And that's all linked from neos.io. You can find all the links there as well. So this is another Neos website, which uh, is home to the NEOS documentation and of course you can search for specific topics and on and on the um, left hand side below the search bar you can see the different categories of, of documentation that we have so there is you know installation and development setup um, with you know um, information uh, for different platforms and, and how to get set up and running with a development setup. Um, there is a getting started section which explains, you know, technical details um, of NEOS and, and uh, design concepts and, and the architecture. Um, features are explained in depth. And what you can see here right now is, oh, this is a draft section. So um, we think hmm, this section could be added to and um, our idea here is to m have that a little bit like Wikipedia, um, to make that a community effort to extend the documentation. So if you're a developer and uh, you know, you're looking for something and you think, huh, this should be the right page where, where, my where I would expect my information to be, um, then don't stop there and think, huh, there's a link at the top, um, Sebastian is highlighting that right now, help us improve the documentation. When you click that, what happens is your email program opens with the, hey, please uh, create an account for me. And what we will do is we will set up a NEOS backend account for you. Uh, so you can actually log into docs.neos.io slash NEOS and you will get access to the content module um, with a workspace created where your suggested edits will go. What you can see, what Sebastian's highlighting at the top right is, you're not allowed to publish directly to the live workspace. So we want to prevent people from uh, accidentally breaking something there. And it should go through a quality process because the documentation is, is really important for us. Um, so what Sebastian is showing now, we have when when Sebastian applied for his account, uh, we set up a, a workspace for him to be reviewed, Sebastian Kurfürst, and that's the workspace that he can push changes to. So as you can see, um, this is a Neos website, so you know all the editing and stuff just works like like you're used to. Um, it helps a lot if you look around a little bit to understand w what kind of node types are available, what structure do we use. Um, as you can see, there is you know an information box that is visible in the backend only. Um, and if you know you're used to NEOS, of course, so you know the content tree and and, and the document tree and and everything, you can browse that and understand uh, understand that right away. So when Sebastian uh, makes some edits, uh, he can publish those to his personal workspace. And two things happen here. Uh, you know, from regularly, someone from the documentation guild will log in and have a look at the different review workspaces and see if there's changes that should be published. Um, and again, what you could do is go to Slack and go to the guild documentation channel and say, "Hey, I've I've, I've pushed some some changes there. Could someone review that?" Actually, I think that there's an email notification, so Rola, uh, Ronald will get uh, Roland will get an email when when a re when a review is happening. So that's ah. why this list is so empty, I guess. Ah. <laughs> so I would prefer Roland to ask <laughs> us, please disable the email notifications. There are so many people <laughs> submitting documentation. Send it to Slack, <laughs> please. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, yeah, uh, uh, someone could create a chat uh, a chatbot for Slack for it, so that 
in Slack. <laughs> you only need to improve. <laughs> All right. So this is how you can suggest uh, edits to the to the documentation. Go to docs.neos.io, um, use the search functionality, or just browse to the to the section that you're looking for. Um, and if you have an account, go to slash neos like you're used to. Uh, log in with your account or, or have that created for you and then make your edits like, you know, enter and change and update the documentation like you would like it to be. Help us, help us improve the documentation. All right, so that was the third step that we had, Slack, discuss, documentation. Let's go one level deeper, pull requests. Ooh, how does that work? Uh, did you do a pull request? Uh, I yet? have a nice story to tell. <laughs> I, I haven't actually. No, I think I think I haven't. Um, the other day I was surfing around GitHub, and you know, while I was using this package, uh, what was it? The flow pack, Elastic Surge adapter. Yeah. Adapter. Okay, good. Uh, I noticed a typo in the README, <laughs> and I was like, Ah, oh, come on! That's that's it's you know, it's in the command. So if I just copy and paste it, I will get an error, and I will wonder what's going on. Um, there, there's a typo in front of the flow command. Okay, Ooh. so that's something we will fix right now. So um, as you probably know much more about this process, Robert, guide us through. You need a GitHub account. Uh, we've prepared something. Oh, <laughs> do you have a Git GitHub account? I do, yes. You do, okay. With two-factor authentication enabled. With triple-factor <laughs> <laughs> authentication, okay. So, and yeah, then you go, just go to the readme markdown file and there's a nice little pencil up there which means you can fork that project um, which is basically a copy uh, to your own workspace so uh, just click on it will you <laughs> and find the place you want to edit um, yeah that looks much better so you can preview if Everything went right, so the syntax used here is markdown. And that looks much better. So you can now create a commit from that. Mm -hmm. And it's very helpful to specify some subject to that commit so people know, oh, there was a huge typo in README which spoiled the whole fun. And then you can propose changes, which means technically there's a git commit created and you can create a pull request from it. So cr just create the pull request and then the maintainers will get a notification. Um, and you can see yeah, in the files change what you actually did. Uh, then someone else uh, from the team could click up there, review changes, you know, this is how, how it would work behind the scenes and could approve or uh, comment on, on that change and then submit a review and then it's merged and the uh, updated README is online and you can sleep well again. Now, now that no. I've seen how yeah. that works, um, I, I, I th you know, I have the feeling I wouldn't have needed to wait until Neos conference to actually fix that typo. <laughs> Huh, that was so easy. It was so Th easy. Thank you for walking us through this. No, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, s I'm serious, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I, I was on this page. I, I don't remember how I ended up there, but you know, I, I noticed that, you know, typo, basically. I was like, huh, what do I need to do? And I'm a little bit afraid. And you know, I'm part of the Neos core team, so you know. Ugh. So thank you very much for um, showing us how that's done. Create a GitHub account. Go to the little pencil, edit the file in question, and then scroll all the way to the bottom, I think it was, where you say, okay, what did I actually do? Submit that, and then submit the, the pull request, and what will happen is someone from the core team will react to that. And yeah. And don't <sighs> be afraid about text changes, but I'm afraid about, because you have the power to merge any code change. I do? As, you, as you're part of the core <laughs> team. <laughs> <laughs> the Neos team. I will Everyone. call my admin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and of course, uh, at on GitHub, you also could use that edit mode you've seen uh, for proposing code changes, but please only do so if that's a small, very trivial thing. Uh, for all the other changes, please uh, create a local copy so you, you can actually test 
um, your code change before you. So that's it. something that we, if we don't have a video about that yet, that's probably something we could could do in the near future. I'm yeah. looking at our video studio, Sebastian. Sure. Um, <laughs> 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 um, so that we can give people, you know, in, information and, and how to contribute and um, how that work, how we expect that workflow to work. Um, that's I think something that you know can help. Okay, th so that was the fourth item on our list: pull requests, um, and then. We've seen on multiple instances today that people have pu published packages. So the, the, the magic word, there's a package out there. And I think many, many agencies, um, are of course, are familiar with the concept because it's so built into the core of NEOS. And, and you know, there is probably a lot of packages out there that have not been published to the public. Packages published to the public. Yeah. Oof. Um, so the last thing that we want to show live here today is how a package is actually published so that it's available for everyone, basically. Right. And uh, surprisingly... So what, what do you want to show? Sebastian, Sebastian showed ah. something the other day. I see. Which he hasn't published yet. So what is this, Sebastian? Just yeah. a quick so overview. So actually, um, this is a package uh, which helps with testing uh, NEOS and Flow projects, especially Fusion and uh, doing screenshots uh, of, of components, these kind of things. Um, we have experimented with that in our company for a bit now. And uh, so let's say, I would say this is ready for pub publishing. Actually, uh, it has a really uh, quite a bit of readme already so if i scroll down you see it has quite some documentation so i think actually it's ready to go and let's go and <laughs> publish that <laughs> oh yeah that looks like a lot of documentation so did you create a github repository for it already no, i no. didn't even create a local git repository i just copied oh. it out of my big project okay from so now. yeah so you need a uh, first thing you need obviously is a git repository which you can init locally so that means there's now the dot git directory and with git add uh, dot you can add everything which is in that directory to that git repository you make the initial commit give it a nice commit message and now you need to switch to github and actually create a new repository of course you're not restricted to github you can also put it uh, to any other public Git server, could be on gitlab.com or somewhere else, no problem, but it must be public. <laughs> Correct. Then you create it, and now that it was created, it has a URL you need to copy, right? So, um, yeah, you can copy these lines, which adds that URL as a local remote called origin, and as you notice, the default branch is called main, not master anymore. Mm -hmm. You push everything and there you have it on GitHub. So you technically published that package now, but when you try to install that later on with Composer, it's not, it won't be found. So that's, I have to tell you, Tobias, there's something like a phone book. A phone book, what do you mean? It's unless, yeah, it's, it's not about phone numbers, though, but uh, about packages. Okay, uh, let me guess. There's a repository or a directory or something. There's actually someone employed to keep track <laughs> of <laughs> packages, and it's, it's the packagist. The packagist, okay. Right? So packagist the packagist works on packagist.org. You may be familiar with that. Um, if you ever created a composer package so you can uh, log in, uh, create a login there actually there are also organization logins so that's very useful as if you like in this case as an organization have multiple packages you can add maintainers there and then you can submit a new package which is basically adding the URL the public URL of the package then packages will download the composer JSON, parse that and see that it was found. So there's a GitHub hook which automatically uh, updates versions here. I don't know if we need to 
that's actually the part I never remember. Yeah, how to it, it depends. <laughs> I mean, if you log in to packages.org uh, with your GitHub account, actually the the um, uh, GitHub hook is created automatically usually. So, yeah. and then in the end, um, your new package will end up in the packages uh, list of packages which is very helpful because we have a copy of that partially um, because I mean there are all kinds of packages in packages right from Drupal from anything which is PHP so how do you know uh, what's suitable for NEOS and the good thing is that uh, you can define uh, what kind of package type is that? And we have um, the package type Neos package, and you can filter for that mm -hmm. and then find Neos packages, or you go to neos.io <laughs> and then you go to download and extensions and packages and plugins. And there you'll see uh, a result of all packages uh, from packages which are actually made for NEOS or Flow, and you can search them and find them there. Right? Wow, and oh, there's... you know me! Shimon's package uh, he mentioned earlier, so that's already on the website. Awesome. Very cool. And this exact page, just for your information, Tobias, is currently uh, what is blocking us from finishing the <laughs> NEOS update for NEOS.io, because in that code, particular code, there are some... I do remember Elasticsearch, yeah. that's yeah, yeah. very specific. Yeah, yeah. Um, that yeah, I do remember that a lot of hours have been spent on, on making that work in the past, and I guess we have to update for new Elasticsearch versions. Yeah, th th we, we already have that, but yeah. So, um, this concludes our round trip, starting uh, from Slack through our forums at discuss.neos.io. We showed you how to edit the documentation at docs.neos.io. We created a pull request for a typo in a package, and we published our own package to, uh, to GitHub and to Packagist uh, to make that available for everyone in the, in the whole wild world, basically. Yeah, so I think that's enough contribution for today. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Sebastian, for doing the live coding with us. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Woo>! Thanks, you. <laughs>